Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of McMillan and Morrow. I'm Dr. Sean McMillan. This is Rich Morrow, my co-host. How are you? How are you? How are you? <laughs> I'm glad you tuned in tonight. We have another amazing episode for you. Stories from around the world. Human beings doing what human beings do, yeah. which is often the crazy. And anyway, Rich guides us and the rest of us ride along. All right, on to the first story, Doc. <laughs> According to CNN, I'm just going to give you a little scenario, actually, because I feel like it'll be easier leading into this story. So imagine you and I are walking through the San Gabriel Mountains and we're looking for some wild mushrooms. Not that we would ever be doing this. And a bear suddenly approaches us. Okay. What are you going to do? Are you going to run? Or are you going to try to find a way to, I don't know, get this bear to go away? Or are you going to? Well, it, it, well, I think it depends on the bear. I think there's some bears you shouldn't run away from, right? Isn't that true? I don't, I don't know enough about bears. Yeah. So now, my natural, my natural rather inclination would be to run. To run for my very life. Yeah. But I don't think that's smart when it comes with a to, with a bear because a bear can chase I'll you down. Run you pretty yeah. easily. So, the National Park Service has recently issued some important tips for what not to do when this happens. And running would be a part of it says if you come across a bear, you should never push a slower friend down. Apparently, this has happened in many cases, but um, on their Twitter they posted that, you know, you should never push a slower friend down, even if you feel the friendship has run its course, trying to be funny, I guess. While it's an exciting moment, it's important for us to remember that bears in national parks are wild and that they can be dangerous, of course. They say that if the bear notices you, though, you should identify yourself as human by standing still talking calmly and waving your arms. So that's a tip for hikers um, that also travel in groups as well. So that's not something I would have thought to do personally, <laughs> is stand there and try to just wave my arms because I don't think the bear would even care. No, but I, but I did hear that you should talk. Yeah. So that the bear knows you are not like An something that they normally eat. Yeah. Like, oh, this, this thing is communicating in a way that I'm not used to. Yeah. And I think you're supposed to, like, you know, like, talk soothingly to the bear. Yeah, that's what Good it sounds Good bear, like. you know, nice bear, nice bear, and then you're backing away, facing the bear. Yeah. That's what I heard you're supposed to. I saw this somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. But I'm, but I'm, but let me just extend. You're never going to need to apply Thank it. you. I'm never going to need to apply this knowledge ever in life. I'm never going somewhere where there's a damn bear. So what would it take to get you to go camping? I can't say on TV. <laughs> I can't. Uh, you ever heard of bear spray? The stuff you sprayed in the bear spray? Yeah, of course. I don't. I don't. I'm from New York, not the Adirondacks or. I mean, I don't know. You know, Appalachia. So, although I'm sure they've heard of spray. Oh man, I got a Tyler question for you. <laughs> oh, God. What is? What would Sean spray smell like? Sean spray. <laughs> he like. What My question is that? It would smell like leave me to hell alone. That's what it would smell like. Don't ask me dumb questions. That's what my spray would smell like. My spray would smell like, why are you still talking to me? <laughs> Not you. But yeah, you whoever know, you spraying it on. My, my fragrance would be annoyed. So whatever smells like annoyance. <laughs> yeah, that's what I am most of the time. Like, <laughs> just listening to how people talk and construct sentences bothers me. Yeah. Yeah, like, where did you learn People that? just bother you most of the time. No. Well, they don't have to be speaking. I think sometimes you just being around people be enough to make you. I just, I just think people, most people, a lot of people don't think. Yeah, I agree. And they revel in the absence of thought when they should be ashamed of it. You sound so disappointed in those people. Yeah, you know, I could, I could tell you stories. On to our next story. We got a special guest coming in. I like um, when we have guests. Yeah, I, I know you do. And this one's going to be a good one. I can't wait to hear how, how you receive this. But um, we have Chev Dixon. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the show uh, Naked and Afraid. Naked and Afraid. I was just about to say that. Yeah. Naked and Afraid. Chev how are you, here? Chev? Are you here? I am here. There he is. Chev! <laughs> we usually clap. Come on. Yeah, we, we clap. We clap. Chev! We clap. Yeah. What's up, man? Welcome. All right. Thank you. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Where are you calling in from? I am from New York. 
New York City or Yonkers. Yonkers. Chev, yeah. I, Chev, I love you already, just so you know. <laughs> I'm from really? Harlem. Love, why you love me, man? Like, you don't know me. I'm from Harlem. I don't have to know you to love you, first of all. <laughs> but secondly, I'm from Harlem, man. So, you know, I love anything. Okay. All right. The, the love is well received then. Got Thank the you. New York connection. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, as you know about. See how, see how confrontational he was? That's yeah, no, nah, he's from New York. That's, from, that's <laughs> New York right there. That's how y'all talk. Like, yeah, you, don't, right? you don't know me. <laughs> like, y'all let me. Y'all know me. It's cool, though. <laughs> anyway. So, you know, as you know, he's an adventurer, athlete. Um, he's also an activist. I'm not sure if you knew that. But you have a mission going on. I'd love for you to tell us a little bit more about um, your mission before I dive into, you know, one of the stories. Yeah, my mission is to get as many black people outside, um, out of the city, into the woods, into nature. I love um, it. Yeah, that's really my mission here. Is just and how to did that. you come to that from being from New York? Y'all ain't got no nature out there. Uh, well, who said wow. that? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that? Um, okay, Ohio. Then, Simmer down. We got a lot more trees. That's all I'm saying. Simmer down. I don't know if Ohio has a lot more trees than New York. We're not going to go that far. Um, <laughs> but... No, New York is nature, man. Like, you know, New York City is just New York City. It's a, a little, small little area. Yeah. Compared to the entire state. Yeah, no, um, I've been to upstate New York. I used to snowboard up there, actually, believe it or not. There we go. Really black so you know what's snow. going on. Yeah, you know, peak and peak was out there. Yeah. You better ask about me out there. <laughs> I will. I'm going to snowboard it. Okay. <laughs> no, right? I, have, I have no idea what's going on. Right <laughs> Athlete talk. This is yeah. our no idea. But go ahead. Don't yeah. <laughs> What's your remind me your name again? So I'm Rich Morrow. This is Hi, Rich. McMillan, and this is the McMillan and Morrow show that you're on now. So you're you're a snowboarder. I'm gonna have to ask somebody about you. I'm gonna vet you. Uh, I'm actually an actor, but I snowboard too. <laughs> Act on a snowboard? I'm, I'm okay. I cannot take this snowboard. <laughs> you good? <laughs> and I'm and I'm hoping we're gonna edit that part out. Can nah, you get to the man, story? We gonna get to the story. How about man? we get to the story? Let me right. talk to our guest, please. Let me learn a little bit about bro. Okay. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. So um, we're gonna give you a story that um is going on from Naked and Afraid, actually. And I'm not sure if you've heard about this, but so you know the nature of the show, right, Doc? Yeah. Kind of. I'm wondering if he knows. I mean, you're out, no in the, you're out in the woods, you're naked, and you got to survive. Basically, they're okay. surviving with nothing but their birthday suit. So recently, while filming in New Mexico, a contestant learned the hard way that being naked and afraid obviously ain't always a good idea. So he was sleeping close to an open flame when suddenly... He woke up in the middle of his sleep screaming because a hot coal popped from the fire and landed on his member, as they put it. What, his penis? <laughs> I, I saw that episode, actually. You saw that episode? Yeah, that's <laughs> funny. Jeff, I mean, think about that. That show has a lot of interesting things, interesting stuff going on. Um, I know another guy almost cut his whole thing off, too. <laughs> oh, damn. With a machete, too. Hell? A lot of weird stuff happening on there. So it shows how, how much having clothes on really saves us from stuff like that happening, huh? Yeah. Um, clothes <laughs> is important, I guess, outside. Um, but just being able to be outside with no clothes is good, too, right? Yeah, I mean, you're the adventurer. I'm, I mean, we've no, had stories no. about street. He, no, 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 look, don't let him fool you. Being don't outside, being fool outside you. With, without clothes on does not sound like a recipe Listen to for this. Success. Just recently, me and him had no. a conversation where he told me if no. something happened, he would be running down Hollywood Boulevard naked. So let him, don't let him fool you. Oh, uh, that's that's brave. Yeah, in ex pure excitement. So don't let him make it seem like he's fully again. And we've had stories in the past of people in other countries, you know, streaking and things, and he's not completely against it. So yeah, but you're not out in the woods, you know, <laughs> when you got when you got you know animals and bugs walking around DTLA, ain't no safer. <laughs> you know, ticks, flies, and what you think you can't catch in the streets of New York? Imagine getting a mosquito bite on your penis, Rich. It's not a good thing. That's not something I want to be imagining. It's not a good thing. Okay, <laughs> that's my point exactly. Forget forget having to imagine in it. Imagine having to live it. Yeah, no. Nah. I'm just saying, I, if I'm in the woods, I want some clothes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. At least it wasn't like an animal or something, because that would have been tragic. So what happened with the other contestant then that you said you saw? Me? Yeah. You said um, there was another episode. With he got, yeah, he got stitched up from what I saw. And then after he got stitched up, they 
put him back. They insert him back into the challenge. He kept, he kept he going. Going. Oh, that's one wow. tough sob. Um, but he, so, what do they win for winning this show? Because it's not a win thing. It's it's not a win. It's uh it's just a, a an achievement essentially. Um, no one is really competing with each other. It's not a competition. It's literally just a challenge to test yourself. Really? Um, yeah, that's what well, it I is. I see it's 21 days they got to go. They got to survive for 21 days. Wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold, hold on a second. So you mean to tell me you spend, you, you spend 21 days out in the woods butt-ass naked and you don't win nothing? No. What, what are you, who are you competing with except Mother Nature? You're competing with the baboons, the hyenas, and the lions. Yeah, okay. And, and that makes no sense to me. How do you even train for that? Not a bit. Um, you just, you follow, you, you train your instincts. You train you your spirit for it. In your That's hometown, you training. just start going to the woods. <laughs> <laughs> leading up to the show, they prepare for, for the yeah, you, mean, you just practice the, 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 the most basic survival skills. Um, understanding what trees you're looking at. Uh, knowing how to find clean water or to filter it. Uh, making a fire. That's really what you need. And having some kind of way of get food, whether it's going to be fishing or setting traps or something. You just need like the basic skills that you would use every day. So um, you can start a fire yourself. Yeah, I can start a fire with yeah, a boat trip. Can you talk a little bit about your experience on the show? Yeah, I'd love to hear this. I can only talk a little bit about it. Um, I don't have the rights to talk yeah, too much. Right, about right, right. It. Yeah, yeah. But overview. all I'm going to say, it was really fun. Uh, it was interesting. <laughs> <I'm bad>. uh, <laughs> I saw lots of beautiful animals. Um, yeah, and my partner. Are you allowed was, to tell us where it was? Or not? Yeah, it was in Africa. In Africa. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It was in Africa. It was. What do you think, Doc? It's pretty. Yeah, the episode comes out like towards the end of this month, anyway. So. Okay. I think so. I'm not sure about the date yet, but it was. It was. A, it was an experience. It was a beautiful experience. Um, right. You get. It's like you get closer to yourself. You get to see yourself. On. so you get to know yeah, me. i couldn't see you getting further from yourself but naked out in africa but <laughs> yeah you, you, you're like you see like the tough guys in the streets in the hood right yeah um, they probably wouldn't last 30 seconds there no um, probably not the, the minute the minute the minute the, the minute food becomes scarce and you know you're gonna have to go five days without food uh you're gonna have to really conserve energy that if you, even if you try to argue it's you're draining energy so you, you have to shut up and just let your partner be foolish sometimes it's it's knowing that it's going to be a brick every night and you got to muster all your energy up knowing that you're not going to be able to sleep well. There's so, just a lot of different things. So on the show, are you guys with the other contestants or are you guys by yourself? No, we're by ourselves. Whew. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, we're by ourselves and just you out there surviving. How long do you think you'd last? I wouldn't go. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, listen, that's a smart answer. Uh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but it wouldn't do anything to you. But you know, like that 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 was just one little thing that I did as a personal little thing that I wanted to try out. Um I try to do way beyond that, way more than that. Um and that's it, that was just one of the pieces. It really that please that that show doesn't like define what I do essentially. Yeah. Um, you know, it's more of uh for me it's just getting people outside, but also pushing myself to the limit that I can go to. I like to see how far I can go before I I feel pain or feel tired you know it's like i like to walk as close to hell as possible but wow. i'm living in the i ain't never heard nobody say that <laughs> so it's That's essentially like when you try like when you go outside and you try things right it's everything that you're, you're you're told that you should be afraid of you should be afraid of the dark you should be afraid of the the tree lightning you should be I, it. all of that yeah all of that right animals this ghost whatever and None of that is actually what you're afraid of. Really and truly, you should be afraid of yourself um, going into an environment that you know nothing about. Um, and that environment is not actually trying to harm you. It's you harming yourself when you're there. And once you start to realize that, it just becomes easy. But that's what I want to do. Take that appreciation for nature and the outdoors and bring it into the community to help people. You so, know, like people, I feel, who are in nature, they, it's like you're connected so close to the source, right? Yeah. And when you're really connected to the source, you have a certain energy to you and other people gravitate to that energy, essentially. But the goal is to not always you go to the source and get all the energy and bring it and give it to people because it has no use to them. It, the goal is to bring them to the source so they can learn to fill their own cup and get their own energy. Um, and that, that's what my, my passion is or my mission is with the outside. It's not me being 
the focal point. It's me bringing people to that so they can become the focal point. Um, of, and, of late. So, and that's and that's one of the big things with the outside too, why it's not as diverse as possible because you know a lot of white people just want to bring you out there one day and show you this so they have a, a it's a check mark for them they can go and tell the world oh you know i brought somebody i brought a black guy hiking or i brought a black woman hiking and stuff but really and truly bringing somebody to do something is not rewarded at all um unless you give them the tools to practice it themselves then they can find you know what they if they really want it or not um a friend if i get a friend and say yo let's go outside they say yeah chef i'll come through but if they walk away and they don't want to go back ever it's like did i really accomplish much you know, I like to see people smile and say, I want to do this again and again and again. Um, and so th that's the path that I walk. And that's my mission is to get people outside. I have a mission and a plan to get a, a million people, a million black and brown people outside doing something who've never been out there before. But the goal is to not just get a million of them and let them walk away. Um, I want them to go out there and become a part of the outdoors and know that it's theirs and it's ours and it's it's God give it to us. God designed it with his universal intelligence to um to fulfill us and give us everything we need to survive in this world. So that's that's what I'm trying to do. That's powerful. And by doing that, you're doing it through, it's the, the Hudson Valley Challenge, right? That's what it's called? Yeah, I'm doing it through the Hudson River Riders, a project that I, I'm spearheading in Yonkers, uh, where I just work with youth and get them outside and get them active, um, get them kayaking, paddleboard in, mm -hmm. run in, uh, teach them how to cook outside, how to hike, camp, identify trees, uh, farm if I have to, like whatever it is. But the Hudson Valley Challenge is to, it's it's a it, it has two purposes. It's to push myself um, to my limits physically, um, mentally, spiritually, and also to encourage people to get out and get active and try new things and show off many different ways that you can get outside. It doesn't have to be a run. It doesn't have to be a bike ride. It could be a kayak trip. It could be just a simple hike. It could be a walk in the park. You know, but. Just encouraging people get outside and get active. Um, obviously, you know, there's a physical element and a health element towards what I do because if you look at it uh, right now, you know, a lot of black and brown people, we're, we're very unhealthy um, in terms of what we eat. And that's not a, to our fault. It's, you know, but eventually it becomes your fault if you don't seek enlightenment um, or knowledge. You know, you have to go out there and look for knowledge and look for the best way to eat. We had, you know, great herbalists and doctors like Dr. CB um, who spoke and tried to enlighten us to, to eat better and to take our health seriously. We have so much physically active people out there all the time doing stuff. You know, we have great leaders and great community people who are always taking their health serious. And it's a matter that we start pushing that to the younger generation and start teaching them to take their health serious. And, and by connecting to nature, you're taking care of your spiritual health, I would say. And if you're exercising, it's the physical part and you're eating better because now you understand how nature works. You know, you can eat better. So that's really what it's about. Chev, let me ask you a question. How do most kids respond the first time that they're out doing the program that you're working to encourage so many of us to do? I get all sorts of response. Um, depends on what, where, where, how curious the kid is and where they're coming from, their background. Uh, if I get a kid straight from the hood who's never, <laughs> you might say, I don't want to do that. It's like white people. Or, you know, or they'll come and, and, and they feel like they're tough, right? And they act That's what, very aggressive. That's what Doc would have said. <laughs> and, then, yeah, and then when you throw them in the water in a kayak and they realize that they have no control and no power, they're like, oh, uh, they it, they calm right down yeah. and start being receptive to what you're, and that's a good time when you can sink in a little bit of those good knowledge and those good drops on them. And that's what it's about. But then you have some kids who are like, like a kid that skateboards around town. That kid is most like, you know, like, hell yeah, I'm with this. Let's go. Yeah. And, you know, you have kids that are, let's just go far. And then you have some kids like, this is enough. I want to go back. You know, you get everybody. And it's really about how to deal with all of them yeah. and bring all of them in um, and make sure everybody feel comfortable no matter where they're coming from or what background they're coming from. For sure. And you start to give people the options and educating them on the different, you know, things that they can do. I mean, like you said in the beginning, a lot of people just feel like the only options you really have is going outside and going for a run or for a walk. Well, if you give another people options, they might find something that they're passionate about that they actually might, you know, take to the highest level for all you know. They could be the next, I don't know, researcher or somebody that, you know, is an adventurer, much like yourself, that ends up doing something great or discovering something just because you go gave them that opportunity to realize that's something that they might want to do. Yeah, that's exactly what what the the part of the purpose says so if i bring a kid to go kayaking it's not necessarily um just to become a kayaker it's it's <laughs> opening their eyes to uh biology um chemistry 
um, different ways how this can lead you to something else. You know, like what, what I what I see about our traditional sports like football and like soccer or basketball, the most times the primary aim for that is just to make it to the league. Yeah. Um, and a lot of kids, when they don't make it to the league, they fall flat and they become harm to themselves, but also to the community that they serve. Because I know a lot of dude that holds the block thought they were going to make it to the basketball, to the league, but they never made it. And what did they do? Instead of using the opportunity to get educated and find a different way to impact your community, impact your people, they end up in the hood again. Right. And they, they still brag about that. They were number one in high school. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? You could be number one in something else. So when I take a kid kayaking, it's really opening their eyes to all of the possibilities that's out there. Um, you know, it's, you can, you can be a professional kayaker if that's what you want to do, but reality is like, there's many more opportunities, you know, also the people that you're meeting that are kayaking, yeah. you know, it's when you go to the court and you play basketball, you're, you're meeting kids, your peers, your age, and you all have dream, but most of your dream are aligning. Right. But when you go in to sit in the kayak and you're sitting next to a doctor or a lawyer or, you know, um, or a police officer, all that, um, you start sitting next to these actual professionals that are making the world move. You know what I'm saying? Then it's like it opens kids' eyes to a different level of possibility, and they can see themselves becoming something greater than what they even they've ever imagined in them in their life. You know, so that's really what it's about: it's exposure. It's just getting people in environments and situations where they can think a little bit. Yeah, you know, you know I think what I'm getting out of this, and the most interesting part of it to me. And just just for full disclosure, I'm not an outdoors yeah, person. Yeah, he's I'm very my, opposite. My, my my black ass is not going. <laughs> I'm I'm going to Neiman Marcus. That's where I'm going. But but yeah. what I like about what Chef is doing with people and with, particularly with kids, and this is the part that I think personally I honor the most, is that he's teaching people the difference between fear and danger, and he's forcing people to understand that a lot of what we fear is a lot of what we have created. Mm -hmm. And I think anything that makes us confront our fears at that level, For sure. that makes us you know, sort of reveal how we participate in our own undermining is an extraordinary thing. Yeah, I it really, I, I used to work with a camp. Uh, it was a rites of passage camp. Mm -hmm. So I have been out in the woods, just, just to be clear, okay? <laughs> just to be clear. I'm not, I'm, I'm not speaking <laughs> as someone who has no experience because that, that would be unintelligent. Um, but we did the rites of passage and we would take, you know, inner city black kids mm -hmm. from across the country yeah. out to some camp in mm -hmm. Wisconsin and Iowa and introduce them to all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And he, Chev's absolutely right. Most of them, when confronted with nature, realize they're not as tough as they thought they were. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and what it also do, does, and Chev, you can respond to this if, if, if you will, um, it makes them take off the mask. Absolutely, you can't hide. The, the bravado, mm -hmm. the machismo, all, they had to take that off yeah. because now you're counting on another man, another woman, somebody yeah. else to help you. Survive. Survive. <laughs> exactly, it's, it, no, it's, it's true, man. It's like, you know, I, I've taken people into the woods where I say to them, you know, just, I would say, don't bring any water with them. Right, and they're like, "Wait, See, that's what, Jeff, that's where I'm <laughs> going home." <laughs> that's what I'm going to do, Jeff. But I, but I say but that to some, and they, but but we we're like we're taught now, like, oh, you have to. Yes, I know water is essential to your survival. You're not going to make it without it. But if I'm telling you don't bring any, clearly there's a way that we're going to find it. Yeah. Um, it's there, right? But people clearly. don't think. <laughs> clearly, like, why would I not Allegedly. want? You to water? <laughs> but because you're, it's so ingrained in you that oh my god, like I need to bring my water, not knowing that water is right there, yeah. right? And we'll go and I'll boom, boom. I'll get my machete and I'll cut a branch or something, and I'll say just let this drip for a little bit. And boom, there's fresh water that's more tasty than what's in the bottle. And they're like, oh, man, I didn't know. I see this every day in my backyard. And it's like, yeah, but this water is cleaner than the one coming out of your faucet. But you wouldn't know, right? You know, so it's like little, little things like that. Or you say, don't go buy blueberries. I'll show you where to go find those. Um, don't buy raspberries. I'll show you wineberries. Like, it depends on the season that you're in. So yeah. there's just so many, so many uh, different ways to impact. But also, like you said, have people confront themselves for real and, and see like, actually like everything under the sun 
is in nature. You know, you, we are nature. You know, we, we eat each other. When I say that, I mean, when you're dead, you're your corpse, go back to the earth. And that's what grows the berries and the trees. And I, think, I, think, I think Rich had another interpretation. <laughs> of I'm them. glad he elaborated because I didn't know what to think for a second. I was like, whoa. Yeah, meaning like we, we, we're all inter interconnected with nature. I mean, get it, yeah. As, in, as with, with plants, with the water. With <laughs> That's it. Going, Chad. We're, we're we're breaking down, but you keep going. Yeah, that's why you that's, me Because I want to know who you've been eating, Rich. <laughs> yeah, who you've been eating, Rich? I mean, hey. <laughs> I eat fruits, but that fruit I know for a fact. A dead corpse kind of gave fertilizer to the earth and yeah. made that tasty. So exactly. that's what I'm getting at. Wow, that's powerful stuff, man. I I applaud you for that. Where can our audience uh, go to learn more about this, and you know, maybe even become you know part of the challenge? Yeah, the you can go to my website. It's Negus Chev N E G U S Chev dot com, and or actually Negus Outdoors dot com. Negus Chev is my name. <laughs> it's Negus Outdoors dot com. And and what do you say? What do you say to Dave? I thought she was reacting because you thought he <laughs> no, I'm, I'm it's, it's me, it's outdoors. So N E G U S. I know that one is always like you know that that, that name alone. You're saying too fast. Somebody gonna slip up. Yeah, Man, I'm telling you, like I, I know people say to me, "Hey, um, I, I just wanna can, can I can I say your name?" Is, is, I'm like, yeah. What do you think it is? Go ahead. Like what? And <laughs> that, that, it's, yeah, that's it's terrible. Terrible. <laughs> that is terrible to do that to people. <laughs> <laughs> say it. Say it. I dare say you. Yeah, I dare you to say it. Look at the spelling. Look at the spelling. Right. Yeah, the spelling yeah. is. But that also it comes from a place of you know wanting to like bring people closer to themselves, and obviously, the the root and the history of that word N E G U S. You know, it's rooted in in Ethiopian history, um, in Amharic, and it just means royal king or sovereign king that's exactly what it means or and if you say nigis meaning the sovereign queen so that is what that is so it's just kind of, i don't use the n-word at all um i don't whoever uses it that's fine but i just don't feel the need to and i haven't in about 15 years and it was a conscious decision i made as a kid to not use that word it didn't i didn't relate to it but i do relate with the word n-e-g-u-s because i do believe that we're kings we're queens we're beautiful people you know but not everybody's a king, not everybody's a queen, right? We all have a role to play in earth. And that's one of the things I, I always like think about when, we, when I talk about, because I, I thought for black people sometimes, we all, we ever, we ever, all of us were, weren't kings. It, it didn't work that way. <laughs> I mean, no, Chev, you absolutely, that's one of right. my, that's one of the things I've said. Yeah. Is, is, and I don't want to get too down in a rabbit hole, but mm -hmm. yeah. everybody wasn't the damn king. Yeah. Everybody does, isn't a queen. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and because there can only be one. Right. Now we can all be yeah. royal. Yeah. Yes. Right. Because right. there's room in royalty mm -hmm. for yes. princes and dukes and countess and duchess. Yeah. We all royal. We are a royal people. Yeah. But mm -hmm. we're not all kings. There can only be one king and one queen. Yeah. Right. And right. that and that's deeply problematic as it relates mm -hmm. to power, as it relates to who gets to decide what what truth is. It, it translates it, it, to a lot in society. Now, I understand what we mean. I, we're down a rabbit hole now. I, 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 I understand okay. what, yeah, I understand what we mean yeah. when we when we bestow honor to you, each other. Yeah. You're, you're a hey king, you say hey king, yeah. I say hey queen. I understand what we're trying to do. Yeah. But when you did, with Chev, this is the point I'm making with what you're doing. When you dig into the language, mm -hmm what it means and what the real concepts are behind the lane, it becomes problematic at a certain point. A little bit. Yeah. So we're yeah. royalty, but we're not all, you yeah. know, all kings. And, and another another part of it is, so, you know, obviously every title requires work to make them real, right? And and if if you if you have the title of, of Negus, if I'm calling myself that, I better be trying to live as close to that as possible. Yeah. And so that that is the, the other side of it. You know, you when we get titles or we need to live when a brother when when another black man sees you in the streets and he says, "Hey brother, um you know, you have to live to that brotherhood that he's calling you on because it's it's something more to it why he says that to you." He could have come up onto you and said anything, but he chose that word. So when when our peers give us um strength through words, we have to kind of live that strength that they're giving us. And that's how we spread out and get bigger impact wherever we go. Um, but yeah, so the word Negus is, is just, it means royalty and I'm a part of that family because what I do is, is royal and it's ancient, Amen. you know, it's mystic. It's so Chef, Chef, give, give us the website one more time. Negusoutdoors.com. N-E-G-U-S outdoors.com. Thanks, man. Thank you for coming on. We are Yeah, dude. It's Anytime. So Thanks for having me. I guess the, the next thing though, is we got to get you guys outside. 
Yeah. Bye, Chev. <laughs> God, 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 God bless your ministry, son. Yeah, we need you outside. No, no. Mm -mm. Don't worry, I'll work on them. God, God don't I want that from me. You might see us <laughs> out there on the Hudson. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. One love. Stay blessed. Man, I appreciate you, man. Thanks, bless man. you. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go over to Germany. Have you been to Germany? Yeah. I've been to Frankfurt, but not for long. Where'd you go? To Berlin. Berlin. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, according to CNN, <laughs> I was just curious. I like knowing where people have been. Um, according to CNN, in Germany, there's been newly discovered chemicals that are so deadly to fungi that they named them after Keanu Reeves. <laughs> what do you think of I just saw the new John Wick, by the way, too. Did you? Yeah, I did. I've only seen one of those movies. I've not. They're all kind of the same. Like, from the very first movie to what I just saw, basically the same thing has been going on through all the Just movies. fighting, blowing up stuff. Same things, all because of what? This dog. You shouldn't have messed with the man's dog. That's the common thing. You don't mess Can with the I'm going to say something that a lot of people are going to disagree with. Hmm. Okay. This you think it was unwarranted? No, I'm not even on that. I'm on something gonna, different. Don't break my heart like that. I, I think our audience is going to react very negatively what uh -oh. I'm about to say. It's going to cause a lot of controversy. We're going to get it in the chat, but I'm going to say it anyway. I saw the Black Panther movie on a plane, mm -hmm. the new one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He wasn't a fan. Not at all. I'm not going to lie. Even as an actor, for me, it wasn't. My favorite. I think the first one was better, personally. I was like, what was the big deal about this movie? Why did why did all the Negroes <laughs> say we have to go see this? I'm like, because it's Black Panther, that's why. Yeah, no. But um, also the homage to, you know, the amazing Chadwick Boseman that they... That part you know, I thought was it. touching, the way they it showed his photos. I, I thought that was good. And how they... And who I, I, I met him. Did I tell yeah? your story? No, you haven't. I was at the uh, Congressional Black Caucus weekend in D.C. It mm -hmm. was when he was doing the Jackie Robinson movie okay. before it came out. He 42. had done it in mm -hmm. 42. And so I was there traveling with someone, and we were at the same party. Yeah. So uh, we introduced, his, met each other, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. We exchanged. I have his number in my phone. Mm. Um, we never became friends or anything. Yeah, but you definitely. But met. you know, we met, we talked, we you know, laughed half the night at all the mm -hmm. craziness going on at the little, the, all the Congress people being drunk. Yeah. Um, so I say that to say I was very happy that they did the tribute to him, of course. But the rest of the movie, I thought, mm, it's all right. Yeah, it was kind of. I'm glad I didn't pay to see me. it. <laughs> No, I kind of had the same reaction, and you know, obviously, this, this story. Is Aaron, about did you it, like? Uh, you see Black Panther too? Did, did you love it? Like it? I mean, love and so I like it. I, I I'm with him. I liked yeah, it. Yeah, I liked it too. It was entertaining. It was long as hell. Yeah, very but it was long. long. It was very, very. Long. I was flying to Atlanta, and it covered almost all my flight. I bet. <laughs> I was like, this movie's long. <laughs> but I tell you the freedom. part that got me when the little boy told told his aunt his name. I am Prince T'Chaka. You started to realize, yeah, what was going on. Oh, shoot. That got me. Yeah, no, it, it, it so definitely had his moments. So that's King That's the right, I'm saying it right? Mm -hmm. T'Challa. T'Challa? Mm -hmm. Okay, same thing. <laughs> same thing. <laughs> tomato, tomato. Yeah. Well, back to that the, you know. I, I clearly don't want to talk about this. No, but, yeah, Can I tell? know. But fungi is something that's actually becoming more of a problem nowadays. I don't know if you know this, but. Um, it's leading to a lot of different infestations and mold, you know, and things nowadays. So they found some components that are super deadly to fungi and that, you know, there's three components that they're putting in this that they feel like is really advancing, you know, us being able to take care of mold and funguses, right? So they did name it after Keanu Reeves, like I said, but the official name is Keanu, Keanu Mycenes. Change the story. <laughs> No, but I'm asking, if they were going to name one after another actor, who would you choose? Change the story. Who would you choose? I don't want to talk about this. Who would you choose? Do you this, think Keanu this was a good choice? And they should have picked stupid. Denzel Misson. I'm not responding. So. <laughs> I'm just, you, can, you can have this moment all by yourself. Will Smithson. No. There you go. Let it out. All Let right. it out. I'm going to move on. It's cathartic for you. I'm just wondering what, what you would have chose. Mm-mm. <laughs> Mm -mm. Okay.
You're going to like this one. I hope. Probably not, but we'll see. <laughs> According to the Associated Press in Utah, psychedelic churches in the U.S. are pushing the boundaries of religion. What do you think about using psychedelics in relation to the church? Because remember how we talked about Well, I smoke cigars. Pastor. Yeah, but so. Pastor Jamal, you know, and weed and cigars are a totally different thing than. Shout out to my main man, Jamal Bryant. Shout out to Jamal Bryant That's down in guy. Atlanta. And, um, you know, you know his type of church is growing, but there's also psychedelic churches. And in this case, people are growing ayahuasca, which a little more than weed. A little stronger than weed. <laughs> so um, I'm wondering what you think about people going on trips and having these journeys and being in these dreamlike states where, you know, they feel they're communicating with their ancestors and walking on different planes and uh. doing this more regularly and it becoming more of a common practice. What do you think? Because psychedelics are making kind of a boom in America these days. Yeah, that's because America is delusional. But it's always been a thing that's around. It's just being more publicized these days. People have been using them forever. Some of our presidents have been allegedly Which ones? doing psychedelics and things of that nature. I don't know. President I don't want to speak on allegedly. that. I don't know who I relatives they that. might have out there. Um, let me just say this. Not my thing. If it helps you to be a better person, <laughs> that's all you care about. Then huh? go on and do it. I'm not. I, I don't. I don't like not feeling like I'm in control. Mm. Like I don't even like feeling like I'm drunk. Yeah. I just don't like to feel it. I no, don't like not having control. Yeah, I don't yeah. like that at all. It's not my thing. I don't want to go to church to be delusional or to feel like I'm in some other trend. But I'm not knocking that. Yeah. For other people, I'm just saying it's never something that I'm interested in doing. But you know, if it makes you a better person, helps you yeah. ma mitigate, manage your life better, it makes you, you nicer to your wife, your husband, your <laughs> lover, your kids, then People. do it. Yeah. But if it doesn't do that, <laughs> stay away from it. Right? Like if you're doing this and it does, it's not making you a better. See, see, I'm a, I'm a philosophical pragmatist, mm -hmm. which means that I'm most, I'm chiefly interested in. The outcomes. Yeah, the I was going to say the results of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So if it's not producing those results, yeah. then one has to ask oneself, outside of just sort of escaping into oblivion, <laughs> what good is it? Yeah. Well, so this is what some of the remarks from some of the people that go have been saying. One person says, every process is an individual one and completely different from everybody else's. Um, but they said they're going to turn off their minds and open up their hearts. So if you feel like you're dying, die. This is going to allow you to be reborn. That's one person. Another person says they try to create spiritual experiences without any dogma and just let people experience God themselves without having to preach to them, without having to tell them anything. Yeah, but stop, stop, stop. Blah, blah, blah. Let, me tell you, let me tell you how that doesn't make sense. Every spiritual experience that we have needs interpretation. Yeah even if you interpret it yourself. Mm -hmm. Because if, if we believe that there is a God and that that God is wholly other, that mm -hmm. is to say totally different than us, yeah. then whatever conversation we have has to be mediated through some kind of interpretation. Yeah. So I get that you don't want a preacher or you don't want a bishop or you don't want a church to do it, mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're experienced or prepared or empowered enough to do it yourself. You may be. Yeah. I'm just pushing back on the notion yeah. that you can have an unfiltered, unmediated mm -hmm. experience. Yeah. You have to interpret it. What does this mean? Yeah, for sure. Because you could take whatever is given to you and run with it and you can do whatever. You can interpret which, that however you want. Which is what people do all the time. Exactly. With the Bible, by the way. Yeah. But keep going. What was the word you used? You said most of the stories are allegonies, right? Is that the right, word? Right, they're allegories. Yeah, allegories. Yeah. So, you know, people a lot of times don't understand what that even is. And they take everything so literal at times that it can be very, very misconstrued. So here's my recipe for that before mm -hmm. you get back to this exhilarating story you're talking about. <laughs> We're going to go to the next one after um, this. You can take the Bible literally or you can take the Bible seriously. To take it literally is easy. This is what it says, this is what you should do. Mm -hmm. To take it seriously is to understand that you are separated. Check this out, mm -hmm. since, since you got me going. <laughs> <laughs> so first the Bible is written in, it's spoken in Aramaic. 
and it's written in Hebrew and Greek. Okay. Translated into Latin, from Latin into German, from Martin Luther. It's a lot of different translations. From Martin Luther into French and then ultimately into English. So you are six languages away. If you include Aramaic, you are six or seven languages away from what it's actually saying. It has to pass through Greek and Hebrew and Latin and German and French before it gets to English. I wonder how many people know that. Well, they're going to know now because they watch this show. Yeah. I'm curious. How many people? Like, no, none. I was going to say. None. I, I'm like, I bet and, you. And, and, and what you say in Greek is not the way you say it in Hebrew. It's not the way you say it in Absolutely Latin. Absolutely not. Like, my mom's first name in Greek means the moon. And you would never even think that that's a word that people would just be using because it's such a common name in America that we just think that it's just a name, you know? The point being. Yeah. You can't take whole swashes of it, yeah. literally, because you don't literally know what it's saying. Yeah. Unless you know Greek and Hebrew and Latin and know German, all of which I know, mm -hmm. you don't know what it's saying. The first yeah. time somebody argues the Bible with me, yeah. I say, okay, you want to argue the Bible? I'll give you three minutes. Yeah. They get insulted, which was my intention. <laughs> I say, so do you, do you know Greek? They go, no. You know Hebrew? They go, no. You know Latin? They go, no. They go, German? You go, no. I, well, I can't talk to you. <laughs> we can't even argue. Because we're arguing a translation that's mm. six languages away. And not to mention, it was, passed, uh, it was passed along orally before it was written down. Absolutely. So people tell stories all the time. You could tell me a story, and I could go tell someone else that same story. And I may miss some of the key details that you told because I'm only remembering the parts of it that I remember. I mean. And that person may remember even less when they go tell that story to somebody else. That's my point. And yeah, and then, not even to mention, though, just the written language is one thing, but people make up stuff all the time, too. And I'm not saying that things are made up. I'm just saying just the reality and understanding of that, I feel like, from a logical standpoint, should give people the understanding of what you're talking about a little bit more. It's like, that's an easy example for you to be able to follow. Let, let me give you another example. I don't know how we doing on time. Yeah, all right. Okay. Okay, so this, this is better than that yeah. story you, you're trying to make me talk about. No, I was going on no, to no, the next no. one anyway. So let's go back into language. Let's talk about the Bible for a second. Again, I'm going to make some of the viewers mad. <laughs> but since, you know, they don't pay me enough, <laughs> I don't mind making people mad. Um, so check this out. Aaron, listen to this. Pay attention, son. So we, we say that the Bible is against homosexuality. Mm -hmm. Leviticus, Romans, chapter 1, and go down to Corinthians, all that. And the, and the main crux is in Leviticus, where it says, it's purported to say a man shall not lay with a man as you lay with a woman. Mm -hmm. That's what Leviticus, I think it's 9 says, okay, or 19. Um, but that's not what it says, by the way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say that. It does not say that a man shall not lay with a man as you lay with a woman. It does not, look, where's my camera? It doesn't say that. Here's how you know. Hmm. It should say, Hebrew word for man is ish. So mm -hmm. it should say ish shall not lay with ish mm -hmm. as he lay with a woman, mm. right? Yeah. If that, that's what it was going to say. That's what it should say. Mm -hmm. Here's what it says. It says, ish shall not lay with zakat as he lay with a woman. Now we got to figure out what the hell is a zakat, <laughs> right? What's a zakat, people? You know what a zakat is? Hmm. It is a male temple prostitute slave. Whew. So the prohibition isn't for men laying with men. Mm -hmm. The prohibition is for having non-consenting non orgy sex that's in the temple. In the temple. Whew. That's the prohibition. I wonder how many people do that too. And if the, <laughs> scripture, if the scriptures wanted to say, man shall not lay with, it would have said, you should not lay with each. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say that. Yeah. But we translate it according mm -hmm. to our political agenda. Mm -hmm. So we've taken zakat and made it each. Mm. That's deep. I'm just saying, hey, don't, 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 don't bring the Bible to me. I was going to say, we. I think you're going to end the argument because you got a little scripture that you learned in your Sunday school. Yeah, from. I'm not that guy. Yeah, no. Nah, you can bring that to Aaron because he don't know no better. Yeah. If you can't bring that to me, I'll rip you up. Like, what are you talking about? Oh, man. I got more. How much time we got? Five minutes? We got one more story. Hey, it's so good. I don't care about these damn stories. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the other thing that we do. We make Paul more valuable than Jesus. We think Paul is the head of the, of the religion. He's not. Mm. 
Like Paul endorses slavery. Yeah. Jesus would never say never. that. Never, yeah. Paul's like, slaves be obedient to your master. Can you imagine Jesus saying that? Yeah, no. No. Not, Paul not says women we should be silent in churches. A, a woman's body does not belong to her. Yeah. Jesus would never say that. But what yeah. we've done, we make Paul the head of the religion. Let me be very clear. I don't follow Paul. <laughs> I don't believe in Paul. Paul's just another Negro just like me. <laughs> Jesus is the head of the religion. I follow what he said. And if the choice is between what Paul says and what Jesus says, I'm choosing Paul. And those two statements from either of them are not equal. Now I'm done. Send your comments to Rich because I won't read them. <laughs> Drops mic. Ah, it's just, it just annoys me. Yeah, I feel you, though. It, it annoys me. I feel you. I feel like we struck a nerve. Yeah, well, we did. <laughs> According to NBC News, a woman on a flight from Houston to Ohio, sad it had to be Ohio, but she bit someone on her flight in an effort to open the plane door at 37,000 feet because she said Jesus told her to open the plane door. She said, and I quote, Jesus told me to fly to Ohio and Jesus told me to open the plane door. Okay. And they had to make an emergency landing because she really was. Because Jesus to told her to? No, because she almost opened that door at 37,000 feet. Yeah, I mean, uh, what do you expect me to say to this? I don't know. I'm just curious to know what you would have done if you were on that plane, sir. Beat her ass. <laughs> this, uh, listen, I don't believe in hitting women. I'm totally against it. I think it's wrong ethically, except in situations <laughs> where a woman is trying to open the door of a plane in mid flight. Then you have the right to beat whoever's ass is trying to do that. <laughs> I would drag her away. I'm not dying. I'm listen. Yeah. My survival instinct is strong. Yeah. I have a strong survival instinct. I like yeah. life. You know, y'all pray about heaven all y'all want. I ain't ready to go. <laughs> okay. If somebody's going to that door on the on the flight, we are going to throw hands. Yeah. I don't care. You could be a 97 year old woman. I'm pushing you to the ground. <laughs> And I'm not apologizing, and I don't feel bad about it. Yeah. No, no, no. Because you don't, you, yeah. No, you know, you're not you. with me. I hear you. If my damn mama was flying next to me, she got up out the grave and started to go to that door, you go I'm whooping her. <laughs> I, got a, I got a strong survival instinct. I'm yeah. not dying for your craziness. No, nah, I feel you. Me no, too. No, you, don't, you, didn't, you didn't get how good that was. No, nah, I'm with you. I'm not I'm dying not for your craziness. I'm not dying for your craziness. That's, That's your crazy. I'm not just talking about on a plane. Yeah, period. I'm talking about across the board in life. On, on the ground. You have the, the right to be as crazy as you want, but I'm not dying for it. Nah. I'm not being homeless for it. Yeah. I'm not doing none of that stuff. You go do you. God bless your ministry. Mm -hmm. But I'm not dying for your craziness. And, you know, I have to correct myself because she actually wasn't going to Ohio. She was on her way to Maryland, but she I was going to visit. Where she was no, going. but she was going to visit and stay with a family friend who was a pastor, don't right? Care. And she left the house and didn't bring no luggage, didn't tell her husband or nothing. Still don't care. And tried to blame it on anxiety. Okay. Well, of course, everybody has anxiety <laughs> now. You know, that, that don't, we don't have time for that. She claims if she didn't have anxiety, she wouldn't have done these things. No, we don't have time to talk about anxiety and what's going on in America, especially in your generation. <laughs> everything, everything makes y'all anxious. Well, I mean, what I do they say? Handle it. Anxiety is because you're trying to live in the future, and most of the kids are trying to live in the future these days. Mo well, most of them, uh, let me not impugn every They want to live their in life America. in two minutes, you know? I'm not, I'm not, there's so many rabbit holes here. One, <laughs> I don't care about the, what, why the woman did what she did. I don't care who she was going to see. Yeah. If I'm on the plane, I care that you tried to open the door. Yeah. This has happened a couple times recently, too. I actually just realized, I saw another story of a guy that was on a plane saying he was going to kill everybody on the plane. Yeah, we and all seen him. We saw that. Yeah, and yeah. then, you know, everybody on the plane jumped on him. And yeah, they, they did what I would do. I they was actually very proud of all the men on that plane. So shout out to the people that are standing in the way between the crazy <laughs> leading to people's deaths because that ain't cool. We need more people stepping up. I'm with you. I'll stop them, too. Even your dead mom, <laughs> she run into the plane door. We got to tackle her. I don't even know what you're saying. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. <laughs> don't know what's going on. That was I a was whole thing. I'm just letting them know that I, I'm with them. I ain't, letting my, I ain't dying for nobody crazy neither. Let's just end it there.
Definitely not. You like went into character right there. I'm just saying. Because like the whole thing came over you. It's a whole serious situation, life and death. We have to end the show. <laughs> and so thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time. We'll probably still be here talking about this because one of us won't let this go. No. All right. See you next, next time, time y'all. McMillan and Morrow, baby. <laughs>